Well, the pressure is beginning to mount on Joe Biden, and it has been, but it is getting worse. Now, potentially as much as $90 million of pledged money are not going to be available for Joe Biden. Now, I need to explain what that means when it's pledged money. Well, like, is it money that Joe Biden told us he already had and now maybe doesn't have? This is really important. Let's listen to this. We'll go to the source right afterwards. Uh, then we got to talk a little bit more on Joe Biden, Kamala, and then something came up with Ted Cruz. But first... Breaking this hour, New York Times reporting donors have told the largest pro-Biden super PAC that roughly $90 million in pledges are now frozen if Biden remains at the top of the ticket. But this may only be the beginning. Reports claim a coordinated Democratic rebellion is set to unfold during a brutal 48-hour stretch for Biden. An 18th Democrat lawmaker just called for Biden's exit 90 minutes ago. Now we're learning that President Biden privately met with White House Minority Leader Jeffries after his solo press conference last night, where he made several embarrassing mistakes on the world stage. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so Hakeem Jeffries is kind of like uh, important, <laughs> mostly because he's the minority leader uh, and uh, he's one of the leaders of really the Democratic Party. He doesn't have the clout that Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer have, but he's pretty important. He's definitely a Democratic leader and uh, he kind of talks a lot like Obama. You know, he's really trying to probably set himself up for being able to run for president himself one day. Uh, so meeting alone with Hakeem Jeffries after that press conference is probably not good, especially since apparently Obama and Pelosi yesterday, uh, they've started apparently talking about, uh, you know, Joe Biden. And uh, let's see, it, it doesn't necessarily look good. Uh, you can see this update from Politico. Take a look at this. What Obama and Pelosi are doing about a Biden. Uh, two of the Democratic Party's most powerful and popular personalities have assumed quiet behind the scenes roles as elements of the party maneuver to push President Biden out. This includes Obama, who was in touch with George Clooney, a Democratic donor, before he published his brutal op-ed in the New York Times calling on Biden to step aside. So Obama knew about it and didn't apparently, from what we can tell, object to George Clooney, Clooney publishing his piece. But anyway, the two men who are friendly both attended the LA fundraiser, George Clooney, uh, Clooney referenced, uh, where he said he'd be beheld uh, a diminished Biden. Uh, said that he beheld a, a diminished Biden and that the leader he interacted with was the same man we all witnessed at the debate. Uh, in other words, when Biden showed up in person at the Clooney fundraiser, George Clooney's like, yeah, dude, he really is diminished. Like, what we saw at the debate is what he is. When he has a teleprompter, he can be stronger. So this is interesting. Now, there's a lot of talk that uh, Pelosi and Obama are going to be the ones that have to come forward to basically push Joe Biden out. Remember what we heard in the press conference yesterday that Joe Biden is uh, really going to have to be convinced by the data that he will lose if he doesn't step down. And he kind of planted the seed to stepping down if that happens. Now, there was another interesting report from CNN, and this doesn't surprise me either about how, let's just say, the White House handles uh, dissent in the White House. <laughs> let's listen. We start with CNN's MJ Lee at the White House. Uh, and MJ, you helped break that CNN reporting that there are a lot of Democrats furious, furious with Biden advisors, furious with them. What? Tell us more. Yeah, you know, one thing that we have heard so consistently since that CNN debate some two weeks ago was how shocked Democrats across the board were uh, by the president's performance and seeing him be so halting and dazed at moments on that debate stage. You know, we talked to a lot of folks who said, of course, we know that he has age. Of course, we had seen uh, some signs, especially over the last year uh, of his uh, decline in terms of his uh, physical stamina, his mental clarity. But that version of the president that we saw in 
the debate stage, they said was basically unrecognizable. And what my colleagues and I have uh, really reported on is uh, there is a lot of anger and the blame that is being placed uh, on the inner circle of advisors and family members uh, around the president. And what these people say is this uh, really painstakingly choreographed and stage managed uh, daily operations at the White House around the president that is set up uh, specifically designed to prevent the public from often seeing the president in these extended uh, unscripted settings. And one thing that many of the folks that we spoke with that they are so furious about is this idea that when people have gone to these inner circle of advisors around the president to express some of these concerns, uh, that they were not taken seriously or really uh, brushed aside. This is what one top down. Of course, because they don't want to lose their jobs. All those advisors and aides are fired out of the White House. It's a prestigious job. Like if you're a dude, it's probably easier to get a girlfriend. If you're a lady, it's probably easier to get a boyfriend or whatever it is you're into. Like, oh yeah, I work at the White House. Yeah? Now you're fired. Democrat told me they said uh, everyone who expresses any level of suspicion or contrary views, they call everyone and they beat the shit out of them and say, stay on message. Now, uh, it is. (laughs) They call everyone and beat the SH9T out of them. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's basically the verbal beating, right? It's the pressure. Uh, Don't talk against the party. How dare you be anti-party? And this is almost like the thought police. What is this, like a, you know, a brave new world or something like that, where as soon as you have a bad thought about the party, you get killed? It is not uh, just the inner circle of advisors that is getting a lot of this heat. It is also members of the president's family who, of course, uh, have been up there, uh, really uh, standing by the president's decision to so far stay in this race. And, And what is the White House saying in response to all of this? Because the... I'll it's save you the time on this. Basically, they blow it off. Uh, you know, this is another like minute and a half year of like, oh, you know, they say it's okay to ask about Joe Biden's age, but then when you do, they blow you off or they get mad at you, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so uh, another headline in the New York Times today. What do we have? Uh, Democrats fear safe blue states turning purple as Biden stays the course, uh, these would be uh, lingering worries about Minnesota, New Hampshire, New Mexico, and Virginia, which shouldn't be competitive at all. Uh, then we have, uh, oh, we got some more election updates right here. President of the UAW is expecting to weigh in on the stakes of the presidential campaign during a speech soon. That'll be interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of folks are reaffirming support for Biden. Mostly you're seeing that in, in sort of the, the unions or those who would benefit from it, right? I mean, like an AOC wants to make sure that she supports Biden because she wants her policies put forward, you know? She wants Biden to call Hakeem Jeffries. Hey, let's get AOC's bills to the table. You know, that just builds her power. But anyway, take a look at this. President's, President Biden's campaign uh, swing in do- <laughs> campaign swing in Detroit comes on the heels of some major Democratic donors telling the largest pro-Biden super PAC that they're freezing roughly $90 million in pledged assets. So in other words, you know, you could argue, oh yeah, we've raised $100 million. Let's argue that. I think it's like $230 million, somewhere around there. But if 90 of that hasn't been funded yet, it's only been pledged. And these... Frozen contributions include multiple eight-figure commitments uh, are now frozen. As long as Biden is at the top of the ticket, then the pressure is once again, once the money drives up, dries up, going to continue to be on replacing Joe Biden. Crazy. Mr. Seward said that Mr. Hoffman had donated $3 million more to the super PAC last month before the debate. A funding freeze is problematic at this point in the election cycle. If donors are committed to making a statement by withholding capital from Future Forward or the Biden campaign, they should make larger donations to progressive nonprofits that are agnostic about who is at the top of the ticket. That's fine. That's probably going to start happening here. Uh, but anyway, Reed Hoffman, who gave $7 million uh, to the Super PAC, uh, said that donors were making a mistake in withholding money. Uh, Mr. Hoffman had donated $3 million more to the Super PAC a month before the debate. So anyway, again, you get this balance of like there are four, there are supporters. Uh, then you've got, uh, you know, folks saying, OK, fine, donate to Democratic agendas that don't care who's at the top. Whatever. 
Reid Hoffman was the co-founder of LinkedIn. Something else to watch are the polls. Real Clear Politics showing Biden actually ahead in some of these latest polls by NPR, but they also put Harris and Newsom in the same lead against Trump. Uh, and this is the NPR PBS poll. They also suggest that Democrats are going to win the congressional vote here. Rasmussen thinks otherwise, uh, thinks that Trump has a six point lead uh, in the general election and a lead in battleground states like Wisconsin as well. So you get them kind of polls a little all over the place here. Trump versus Harris, they give Harris a two point lead at ABC Wash Post and a Trump one-point lead versus Biden-Kennedy uh, as well with uh, some other names over here. This That was ABC Washington Post. Now, uh, so this was the Hakeem Jeffries meeting uh, update, and I think that's it on Biden updates. But, oh, yeah, you know, you're at about 18, 18 to 19 representatives or congressmen or women that have now called on Biden to drop out. I've seen some pro- uh, Biden posts that have uh, been arguing, oh, you know, uh, it's only a small percentage of Congress folks that are starting to uh, call for Biden to drop out. But what it is, is it's like a growing fire. Yeah, it starts small, but it just keeps going and going and going. And that's the problem for Biden is it's getting worse and worse and worse. Now, I thought this was also very interesting. Ted Cruz here uh, argues with these climate protesters. The biggest climate polluter on planet Earth. You have no idea. You're a protester and you're utterly ignorant. He's asking who's the largest polluter in the world. What's the, okay, so he doesn't know. He's literally protesting about climate and he can't tell you who the biggest polluter on planet Earth is. And he won't. What country is the largest polluter on planet Earth today? Okay, so this young lady has no clue. She said. Anyway, so they go back and forth. He ends up saying, hey, it's China that's the largest polluter. America leads in the reduction of uh, carbon emissions. And to some extent, uh, he's right. And in other angles, he's wrong. It's worth talking about it because the popular thesis is, yo, Ted Cruz schools climate protesters. So first, let me show you uh, where he is correct. Right here, uh, China on an annual basis emits substantially more pollution than the United States does. Of course, we're now number, where are we? We're number two right here. Uh, in India is just now surpassing the EU. You can see the EU and the US are rotating down on their emissions, uh, which is good. You know, there's more of a drive for efficient homes, efficient vehicles, cleaner energy, even cleaner fossil fuels, natural gas, oil, or whatever, cleaner burning vehicles, whatever, fuel economy, you name it. If you look at total emissions ever, the US actually still blows the EU and China out of the water. Obviously, over time, China will probably surpass the United States over here. So it sort of depends on what question you're asking in terms of what question or answer you're going to get. It is worth noting, though, that yes, the United States' emission on an annual basis has declined uh, probably somewhere around 20% here, which is decent. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see. Uh, the United States is working on it, so to speak. Uh, so, uh, whereas China, there's no indication really of that at all. Uh, and I think the only reason we have a blip over here was because of COVID. <laughs> Otherwise, it's basically this rocket ship of emission in China. So, uh, on that note, uh, Ted Cruz is probably exactly right. Not advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.